Hey, it's Doug Atkinson here at Identiverse 2018 in Boston, and we have with us the CEO of Savient, Amit Saha. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, and Savient has really been enjoying quite a good run. Uh, I know you have a presence here at the event, um, and you've just recently moved into the Magic Quadrant Leaders category uh, for uh, IDAS, effectively. Uh, and tell us a little bit about you know what's been driving the the Savian solution. You know where are you finding traction? What is uh, what is really driving the growth that you've been experiencing? Sure, um, I think we have been very lucky to actually grow uh, year on year. So we were featured in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, I think three years back. And uh, every year we have gone through each of the mag magic quadrant, we have progressed and finally we uh, came to the leaders quadrant this year. Uh, so it has been a phenomenal run for us. Uh, I think the big uh, challenges that organizations today are facing is how do they really address hybrid IT? Uh, how do they secure uh, their movement to hybrid IT? That means they are really moving away from a traditional perimeter to a perimeter-less world in the cloud side, uh, and how do they secure their critical assets as it sits both within the enterprise as well as on the cloud. And some of the solutions that we have been offering really uh, take some of those challenges head on and give them the right visibility, the right level of access control, management that they want to do uh, so that they can do the business securely as they uh, adopt more of hybrid IT. And uh, that solution has really resonated uh, with our customers uh, as well as with the analysts, Gartner, and they recognize that and uh, based on the features that we have been able to deliver, us being more of an IGA as a service provider, uh, specifically from the cloud, uh, that has really resonated with the analysts and that's where we keep going up in the magic quadrant. Well now, hybrid IT is, is a topic that you're, that you're presenting here at one, of the, uh, at one of the sessions upstairs. Talk a little bit about how you're thinking about hybrid IT with regard to identity management and just the enterprise in general. Sure. Uh, one of the key changes uh, that have happened in the enterprises, I would say roughly three years back or two years back, would be that uh, you know prior to uh, two years back, organizations just used to trade cloud as something where they would move some of their dev and test some of the non-critical uh, workloads into cloud. What has really taken off in the past two, three years is uh, uh, organizations have been really embracing cloud, so that means they are moving their critical assets to cloud. Now, obviously, when it was on-premise, they had a lot of security controls built into uh, the whole solution, uh, and they could really enforce their compliance mandates. But as they move some of those critical assets into cloud, uh, now they understand, or now they see that their business transactions are actually performed in unison in, uh, in on-prem, as well as in the cloud. And they need to have a cohesive solution that brings all of that together. Um, so that's where uh, a hybrid IT solution really needs to address uh, so that you know we don't differentiate really between uh, something being on cloud being treated differently or secured differently as compared to something being on-prem secured differently. Well and this is really a cultural shift that's been happening just just really a lot of people I'm, I'm not sure really thought we'd ever get there but you can see it starting to really take hold and that is the idea of moving a lot of things that would traditionally not be acceptable to have in the cloud, moving yeah. them to the cloud, and it's chiefly because the solutions are becoming so robust and and uh, and really enterprise grade. Absolutely. I think uh, across the board, whether it is infrastructure as a service provider, or you know your collaboration suite providers, or even application SaaS providers, uh, the solution offerings have uh, matured tremendously, and I think uh, no top 10 technology company uh, you know, there is out there that does not have a cloud solution out, out in the market. And I think uh, we will see more and more adoption of uh, cloud. Uh, it's all driven because of the business requirement to collaborate more with different types of uh, business partners, different type of audiences, uh, the business demand to react very quickly to changing uh, environments, and they need to scale up or down, right, the whole elastic nature of cloud, uh, as well as ensure that they are just paying the right amount of uh, money as they consume services within cloud. So I think all those drivers are really driving organizations to uh, adopt cloud in a big way. 
uh, and the industry is reacting to that by making their solutions more and more robust uh, and that in turn drives um, the, tech, uh, the solution to uh, the technology solutions to be uh, able to address the security and compliance requirements for organizations to basically do a business in cloud in a secure manner. Well, and so those, those, those objections, right, uh, security, compliance in particular, those are kind of old standard objections to you know, more of a cloud-based approach. Mm -hmm. um, how are companies kind of overcoming that? Is it, is it like an organic thing that's happening within the organization where it's kind of bubbling up from, from the lower levels, or, or, or is the C-suite driving this? I think it is, um, it is a grassroots campaign. Um, to a large extent, I think you will see that uh, dev DevOps is very synonymous today in organizations, so that means uh, developers want the agility to quickly spin up a workload on the cloud and start developing. They, are, they don't want to wait for IT to provision an instance and you know, uh, wait for a couple of weeks of you know, downtime, no, really, uh, no real productive work. So I think it's a grass, grassroots campaign, and I think uh, also it is driven from the C-suite as well, because they really uh, want uh, the predictability. Uh, they want to ensure that uh, they are moving some of their b budgets from the capex to the opex model. Uh, they want predictability, and uh, in terms of you know how much expenses they are going to incur year on year as they consume the services rather than pay upfront. Uh, in the traditional perpetual model. So when you come into an organization and, and you're engaging with, uh, with somebody who's, who's looking for Savian's help, what are, you, what are you helping them with with regard to this sort of transformation? Are you, are you finding um, particular stories that work well in, in terms of... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think uh, one of the key aspects to look at, uh, first of all, is how is the... Comp how is the organization really adopting cloud? Uh, more often than not, they will be testing the waters in the cloud with something like an Office 365 or a Box collaboration. Uh, you know, Office 365 become, being one of the most popular uh, cloud applications out there. Well, and, a, and again, an, a tremendous transformation, right? The, yep. uh, the, yeah. The fact that you know Microsoft has transformed their entire business effectively. Absolutely, to, and to the cloud. that and they are now the number one cloud provider exactly. out there. So yeah, I think you know we need to first understand what type of services they are consuming in the cloud. Uh, you will see Office 65 Workday um, being consumed, Workday and the SaaS model, Office 65 more in the collaboration world, and uh, AWS and Azure making a very big impact from the infrastructure as a service uh, side of it, right? Uh, and each of these three type of cloud providers or flavors have a very distinct requirement from a security and compliance standpoint, and that's what uh, Savient is offering today, uh, where we want to go, first of all, across different cloud providers but we want to still give the assurance and uh, the single pane so that you can, um, e even though the underlying cloud providers are different, you still want to enforce a consistent set of compliance controls, security controls across all the different cloud providers and ensure that you know whether it is data moving in from your on-prem to the cloud or from one cloud provider to another, it is always secure. Uh, you are always in control of how that data is shared, how that data is extended, and uh, you know one of the things is, uh, like you mentioned, compliance was one of the old school drivers, but you will see now compliance mandates are also very quickly adopting, uh, or rather adapting in this environment, right? You have GDPR coming in a big way, which That's a wants huge to uh, drive uh, you know, the privacy and uh, the ability to control how the information is shared and uh, it is paramount in terms of how organizations deal with that in a hybrid IT scenario. Well, and I think a lot of people were caught flat-footed with GDPR, I think they were in denial, uh, and then when they realized they had to be compliant, yep. uh, they were looking for a lot more nimble yep. uh, movement, which <laughs> the cloud enables. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I think uh, GDPR right now is very heavily consumer uh, focused, right. because they want to give the power to the end user to, uh, you know, and like uh, forget about the end user uh, in terms of where they're uh, you know deleting their personas de deleting their uh, digital identities and so on and so forth but i think you know uh, gdpr is maybe i would say the first version of this i think the more and more your assets sit on the cloud uh, organizations themselves will start uh, deriving some of the learning from uh, getting gdpr compliant take those security controls and really see the value in terms of having the security controls being inherently part of their cloud 
uh, environment. And I think that's where uh, you know some of these compliance mandates are really pushing the organizations to think, uh, think through, right? Because uh, not everything has to be compliance oriented. Uh, it also has to um, come from the corporations themselves. They need to have uh, a sense of um, you know um, uh, security measure that they want to put together. Uh, a lot of um, measures need to be put in so that you know whether it's an end user or an employee or a partner is able to collaborate with you uh, with confidence that their information is going to remain secure uh, whether it's uh, on-prem or on the cloud. So now where do you think we are in terms of adoption? Uh, not only just moving to the cloud but just adoption in general of, uh, of identity management and governance uh, solutions. I mean are we I know obviously the larger enterprises have got multiple solutions that mm -hmm. they're sorting through. Uh, Mid-market, SMB, I mean, where do you see us in terms of the adoption curve? Sure. Um, I think uh, identity governance as a service is uh, just beginning. Uh, I think we will see more and more vendors really coming up with great offerings in this space. Uh, Savient is leading the charge uh, in that regard. I think uh, we are looking at uh, adopting cloud uh, in multiple ways. First and foremost, we want to obviously deliver it as a service, and what that means is we want um, things, to, the identity governance uh, processes, to be ve uh, very flexible to address a uh, to address the security and compliance requirements that are very distinct per organization. Uh, you cannot paint all of that with one single brush and say that uh, you know what I am going to give you only two workflows and this is what you get. Uh, and nothing beyond that. So instead of that, we are giving a full flexible solution delivered as a service from the cloud, so that is first and foremost. The second thing is uh, the type of integration that you have to do to, uh, to you know, ensure that we are able to secure different cloud assets is also uh, very distinct. Uh, On-premise, it was easier because you had a perimeter as the last mile security or the safeguard. In cloud, what is happening is because things are already outside of your traditional perimeter, and you have a very short amount of time to react to uh, to stop or prevent a security breach, and uh, the data being uh, you know compromised, right? So the identity management as a service is also moving more towards a real-time protection, uh, especially in the cloud scenario, because you need to be able to quickly detect a compromise and react very uh, rapidly to that. Otherwise, uh, the monetary loss, um, the reputation loss are huge uh, in terms of uh, you know all those losses from a cloud standpoint. Uh, you will see a whole lot of examples around compromises of uh, data through uh, unsecured S3 data buckets in AWS, and those are just very uh, new examples that are coming out in terms of you know the different ways in terms of data can be compromised in a cloud situation. Well, Amit, this has been great. Thank you very much for sharing uh, the insights that you've provided. Congratulations on the on the growth and the, and the movement up into the Magic Quadrant Leaders category. Uh, well done, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Sure, thank you. Happy to be here.